It is a question that I keep very much at the front of my mind over time. The reason I do so, of course, is because as Chief Science Officer of the Foundation, I'm, I have overall responsibility for identifying our priorities in the Foundation. And what we've always had as a strategy, as a choice, as a, as a, as a metric for identifying those priorities is the difficulty of the problem. We understand very clearly that stance is a divide and conquer strategy and therefore that we need to get everything working and as such it makes sense for us to prioritize the things that are the most difficult because they need to catch up this is of course even more the case when we take into account the fact that other researchers who are constrained by peer review and such like tend to be biased in favor of working on the low-hanging fruit so the things that are most difficult get even more neglected all right, so then coming to the question, well, historically what I have said is that actually oncocancer is the hardest, that cancer is the most difficult part of aging to fix. I even said this back in the very first sense paper back in 2002. Um, and the reason I said that and the reason I have historically thought that is simply because cancer is the one aspect of aging that has natural selection on its side where it can get cleverer as the uh, attacks on it get cleverer. And that has been my view until quite recently, but now I'm a little less sure because of, largely because of the breakthroughs that have occurred in cancer immunotherapy over the past five or six years. Um, and I'm not just talking about the breakthroughs that everyone knows about, like CAR-T and um, checkpoint inhibitors. I'm talking about kind of second generation things that are not necessarily on everyone's radar yet, but are very much coming and are exploiting our ability to do really high throughput omics on people's cancers so as to personalize things well. You know, there's a huge amount going on there and it's very well funded. One of the things that I am really happy about is that Sean Parker, who of course is a wealthy guy and very visionary, co-founded PayPal and all that. Um, you know, he's, oh, Facebook. He's a guy that um, I met a long time ago and tried unsuccessfully to recruit as a major financial supporter. But now he is putting very large amounts of money into cancer immunotherapy and I'm really delighted about that. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's doing my job. Um, but why I mention all this is that it means that we may not need in the future to, to, to view cancer as the number one problem. Many of you will know that the sense approach to cancer, namely WILT, is really ambitious. I mean, really, really, really difficult. And in fact, there are plenty of biologists out there who think that the rest of sense is quite reasonable, but that wilt is just completely infeasible. So, you know, it's worth mentioning that um, wilt may not be necessary. And I, and I, no one would be happier than myself if that turned out to be true. So what this le where this leaves us, coming back to the original question, is of course you know what else is really hard and i would certainly say that mitre sense is at this point definitely the one that competes with cancer with oncosense as the most difficult all of the other areas of sense at this point have moved forward at least in regard to certain examples into uh, startups and in, in most cases into clinical trials so we're looking now at a situation where really Oncosense and Mitosense are the two things that need the most work. Even Glycosense, the, 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 the elimination of crosslinks, is now being pursued with a company that has been spun out from our group that, um, uh, that we funded for several years at Yale. So yeah, I would say Mitosense is really up there as the thing we should be focusing on.